Good day, Matalino. I am Junvert. In this video, let us discuss the uh, engineering mechanics. Problem 3, 2, 9. Alright? This is our problem. Let us start. We have these uh, two cylinders. Cylinder A and cylinder B. Connected by this rigid rod that is parallel to this cylindrical surface that is smooth. Meaning... There is no friction between the contact surface at the contact surface at A at, and at B in the smooth surface and the smaller uh, is two small cylinders. Now, the distance, uh, because the, this rod is parallel to this inclined surface, which means that the distance from point O to the center of the two cylinders are e also equal. Okay? And the angle here between this... Uh, Two cylinders is 90 degrees. That is very important information in our problem. This cylinder weigh uh, 100 pounds and this one weigh 200 pounds. Okay. The question here is what is this? Ang what are this angle alpha and beta to define the position of equilibrium? Okay. Uh, de it de depending on the value of alpha and beta, these two cylinders may slip to the right. It will re uh, rotate to the right. Or it may rotate to the left. Okay, there is a certain angle value of alpha and beta so that this system is in uh, this system is in equilibrium. Okay, and that is our task. What is the value of alpha and beta? How to solve that? The first thing to do is to determine the relationship between these two angles. We know that a straight line is 180 degrees, and we have this nine, and we have 90 degrees here. Therefore, the alpha and beta, the sum of the two. Of course, alpha and beta is 90 degrees. All right? That is 180 degrees minus 90. 180 minus 90. What remains is the sum of alpha and beta, 90 degrees also. Now, we have this value of beta in terms of alpha. The beta is 90 degrees minus alpha. Okay? To define the equation of equilibrium, we need to write the rotation of these two forces about this point O. Of course, the moment of the force is the magnitude of the force times the moment arm. The moment arm is defined if we are going to call this distance from, the, from point O to the center of A and B, R, then the moment arm is defined as the perpendicular distance from the line of action of this force to the moment center. We call we, This is the rotation center the center of rotation so we have this distance from the figure this is cosine cosine adjacent over the hypotenuse therefore this is r cosine of alpha and the other one is r cosine of beta these are the distances now summation of moment at o must be equal to zero summation of moment at o zero therefore we have this 100, that is counterclockwise rotation, times the moment arm, R cosine of alpha. The clockwise clockwise rotation about point O is 200, that is R cosine of beta. We can cancel out R, cancel out R. So therefore, the resulting equation is cosine of alpha, cancel 100, is equal to 2 cosine of beta. But we have the value of beta in terms of alpha. That is 90 degrees minus alpha. So we can write this equation. Let me check. I have something to check here. If Okay. I load the proper window. We have this. The cosine of alpha, therefore, is equal to 2 cosine of 90 degrees minus beta. Uh, that's correct. 90 degrees minus beta. 90 degrees minus alpha. Okay? From this relationship, beta is 90 degrees minus alpha. Now, to solve for alpha, we need actually trigonometric identity. Okay? Uh, fortunately, this tri the trigonometric identity that we need is very simple. Actually, this is very easy to trace. Note that, rec or recall that the if we have this cosine of 
an angle 90 degrees minus theta. This is actually equal to the sine of theta. Can you recall that trigonometric identity? If you already forget that trigonometric identity, let's trace that back. So if you have this right triangle, and let us call this angle theta, and let us call the dimensions of our triangle ABC, we have this uh, base, altitude, hypotenuse, okay? This angle actually here, the two, uh, recall that the two acute angles in the right triangle are complementary angles. Therefore, this is this angle here is 90 degrees minus theta. Now, if we are going to write the cosine of 90 degrees minus theta from this triangle, that is actually adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent side of 90 degrees minus theta is A. The hypotenuse is C. Also, the sine of theta. You can see that the opposite of theta is A and the hypotenuse is C. They are actually both A over C, which means they are equal. That's why we have this identity. The sine of theta is equal to the cosine of 90 degrees minus theta and so on. There are many trigonometric identities for these two complementary angles involving sine and cosine. Uh, we have this cosine of theta that is also sine of 90 degrees minus theta and so on. Also, the tangent and the cotangent, they are also equal. Okay? For, for theta and 90 degrees minus theta. So, we have this. In our equation, this will become the cosine of alpha is equal to 2 sine of alpha from here. Okay? So, we have we can cross multiply the cosine. So, this will become 1 half sine of alpha. All over the cosine of alpha, we cross multiply one half and two to the uh, both sides of the equation. So, sine over cosine, we know that that is tangent of alpha. This is equal to 0 0.5. Okay. Uh, the next thing to do is to use our calculator to solve for the angle alpha. Um, I load this Canon or Casio calculator. May I check if our Casio calculator loaded correctly. All right. We have this shift tangent of 0.5. That is 26.56 degrees. And that is our answer for the value of alpha. Alpha is 26.56 degrees. Baby! So now what is the value of beta? Of course, the value of beta is 90 degrees minus 26.5. 56 degrees. Okay, let us write that. that. 26.56 degrees. Uh, 90 minus 26.56 is 63.44. May I check? 90 minus 26.56. Correct. 63.44 degrees. The beta... 63.44 degrees and these are our answers answer for alpha and answer for huh, hey. <laughs> answer for beta all right if you are only interested up to this uh basic solution and this is actually a basic solution or to this is basic class but do not do, do not uh, underestimate this type of approach because this is a very powerful approach Okay, if you are only interested up to this point, you may stop watching this video. You are dismissed. All right. <laughs> but those who wish to uh, dig deeper to this problem, continue watching this video. Actually, the, 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 we extend this a little. Uh, let us dig this a little deeper. What we did actually here is we position the resultant of our forces so that it will pass through the moment center or the rotation the center of rotation so that it will not rotate the system will be in equilibrium if the resultant will pass through the point o we know that the resultant is 300 pounds 100 plus 200 there is no doubt of that and we position this resultant so that the line of action will pass through point o in that case the whole system cannot create a rotation Okay, 
it is in equilibrium. That's what we did actually in our solution. But if we are going to solve this problem in this manner, involving the resultant, now let us call the distance between 100 and 200 equal to D. And let us find the distance in terms of D, the distance of R from the 200 pounds. That is in terms of D. And let us call that distance by X. Okay? Uh, can you recall the resultant of parallel forces? If you have these three uh, parallel forces, let us take a moment at this point. At this point, take a moment at this point to find the value of Bard X. So we have this Bard X is to R. That is the moment due to the resultant. And the equal class to D times 100. We know that R is 300. So therefore, the Bard X times 300 is equal to D times 100. 100 divided by 300 is one third. Therefore, bard x is actually one third of d. Okay, we already know that that these two distances, in terms of alpha and beta, are cosine of alpha and are cosine of beta because we call this distance from O to the center of the cylinders as R. Okay, so therefore d is equal to the sum of these two. And we already position this value of R so that it will coincide with the location of O. Therefore, bar X is also R cosine beta. So we can write this equation into this form. We have this R cosine beta. And that is from our figure. R cosine beta. That is the value of bar X. Okay. Is equal to one third times D. The D actually is the sum of these two. We can factor out the R. That is cosine alpha plus cosine beta. Okay. So that we can cancel out the R. We can cancel out this R. Therefore, cross multiply the 3. Cross multiply this 3 from the right side to the left side. That will become 3 cosine beta is equal to cosine alpha plus cosine beta. Uh, transpose cosine beta to the left. We have this 2 cosine beta. Is equal to cosine alpha. And we know that beta is 90 degrees minus alpha from the relationship of these two angles from the geometry. We have this 2 cosine of 90 degrees minus alpha is equal to cosine of beta. And again, we are going to apply the trigonometric identity, which is the cosine of alpha or the cosine of 90 degrees minus theta is equal to the sine of theta. All right? So if we are going to apply that identity here, this will become, our equation will now become 2, and the yellow, I will use yellow, 2 sine of alpha is equal to cosine of alpha. May I erase this one? So we have this uh, sine of alpha all over the cosine of alpha is one half. So again, we have this tangent of alpha is equal to 0 0.5. And we go back to our equation in the previous page. Okay. I show you the previous page. The tangent of alpha is 0 0.5. And we have the alpha and we have also the beta. That's it. I hope you learned something from this video. See you in our next video. Bye-bye.